Talking of classy as ever, um, our feature interview today is, well, we're kind of bringing the worlds of art and music together. Our feature interview today is with Stanley Donwood. Now, you may know Stanley, he's best known for his work with Radiohead, because since 1994, when his friend Tom York asked him to help create the cover for the My Iron Lung single, uh, he and Tom have worked on all the Radiohead album covers, as well as all their merchandise and artworks. Even if you don't know Stanley's name, you've seen his stuff. You might I've have got, also seen I've his work. got some of his stuff. Yeah. Oh, what have you got? Yeah, I've got I'm... a print as well. What have you got? Um, I have got... Well, did he do Hail to the Thief? Yes. Yeah, that is... I've got a big one of those. Oh, nice. That's a great cover. Yeah. It's a great cover. So, yeah, I mean, so he's done everything. And uh, you also might have seen his work featured at the Glastonbury Festival. And his images were, were used, I think, first at the festival in about 2014. And he's worked on official posters for them and prints and stuff over the years. Uh, anyway, his relationship with Radiohead is pretty unique. I mean, I can't think of another visual artist with an association with a band that's lasted that long and is so linked to the music. So Stanley kind of works on the visuals for each album as the band are working on the music. So as they create... He creates as well. And if you know Radiohead's covers and artwork and merch, you know he's done some brilliant work. Now, marking the 21st anniversary of the Kid A album, and also Amnesiac, Stanley and co-curator Tom York are staging an exhibition of the paintings that he did for the records. So these are images made between 1999 and 2001, and they're going to go on display alongside drawings and lyrics and digital art, all made about the same time, at Christie's in London next month. So it's showing under the banner How to Disappear Completely, and you can see it from October the 9th till October the 15th. And Sally is selling some of the paintings as well. There's going to be an auction, so you can bid online on a sale entitled First Open Post-War and Contemporary Art, so anyone can bid for them. But maybe more kind of accessibly, you can see the paintings up close if you go to the exhibition, because they're these huge canvases that he made, and they were photographed for the album covers. But the actual originals have got all this texture and depth to them that you'll be able to see up close. Uh, and just earlier today, I spoke to Stanley himself from down the line at his studio in Brighton to find out more about the paintings, how he works, and this new exhibition. When did the idea first come and what was the idea? Because I assume it's not just like, hey, we're just going to put some pictures up on a wall and people can see them. That was never really going to be the case, was it? No. Well, a couple of years ago, um, or possibly even more, we started talking about the fact that um, Radiohead's records, Kid A and Amnesiac, were going to be 20 years old. So uh, maybe we should, you know, capitalise on that somehow, make, make make a point of it and and re-examine all of the work that we did because we you know we kind of made far too much work for one record <laughs> sleeve what we were going to do was weld together a load of shipping containers and um, make it look like they crashed to the side of the albert hall um, and then fill that space with with a, an exhibition wow and it was all looking good uh, apart from well obviously um there were some obstacles westminster council weren't particularly keen <laughs> um, they pointed out it's like a, a massive advert for Radiohead, and we we were like, yeah, but like the Albert Hall is like a massive advert for the royal family, isn't it? <laughs> you know. So, but anyway, it was all kind of academic because you know coronavirus happened. Um, but we'd been working on this um, this idea, you know, in 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 the abstract sense. So we carried on, and, and we've made basically a, a, we've made an exhibition in a, a digital form. So uh, that that will be coming out in november and at the same time i've realized i had all these paintings that i'd done 20 years ago and they're 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 big you know they're like nearly two meters square and i've just sort of had them in storage and um so i started thinking about how i could show them well it just ended up that i'd sell them because otherwise i've just got massive paintings in storage forever (laughs) and for no reason no one will ever see them and i've just got to pay some bloke for a bit of warehouse somewhere So we're going to do a little show in in Christie's from the 9th to the 15th of October. And this is it's very interesting because I did not know, and a lot of people don't know, I don't think, that you can just go into these places, auction houses. Anyone can. Like normal people can just go in. Really? And have a look at the art. I didn't know. So they have stuff that museums can't afford. But you can just walk in and have a look at it for free. For me, and you know, me and Tom, like the idea of doing the show in, in Christie's is just like, what? Wow, you know? Uh, 
the story or the kind of the the legend is that you immerse yourself within the recordings, within the songwriting, within that kind of the creative process mm. the band are going through. Your kind of you yeah. got your interpretation. Is that how it was with these ones? Then yeah, well, oh, we kind of we, we start at the same time. So when they're kind of like putting music, putting tracks together, putting ideas, musical ideas together, I'm sort of flailing around doing the equivalent visually <laughs> you know i, I I've, I've worked work, you know with with the band in the in the studio so it's you know it's really a bit like painting by numbers because you know music is very for me at least it's very visual music looks like stuff and w when you find what the music when you can when you can kind of discover what the music looks like once you've got that it's easy you just carry on but finding it in the first place that's quite hard When you got these huge canvases or huge boards out of storage, how did it feel looking at them again in their original kind of incarnation? It's, it's quite, it's, <laughs> I don't know, it's a, it's a bit like where if you haven't seen one of your children for a while. Oh. And it's like, oh, hi. That's, that's Jesus, lovely. I remember. <laughs> yeah. And, but the weird thing is because they, they're, they're kind of encoded with um, the time that they were made. So you kind of look at a, a bit of a corner of a canvas and, and the, the marks on that, um, they're, they're like a, a little time portal to the time that you did it. And you can remember all sorts of things. You can remember where you were, you, what the weather was like, what was going on musically, what you know, what you were listening to. And it's, it's sort of in there, it's in, the, it's in the paint, it's on the canvas, which is a sort of, it's a really nice thing. 